stream uh, viewers. Maybe they're in that camera. I don't know. I have no indication whatsoever. But that's a camera, so I'm going to say hi. Before we welcome our panelists, can we give a nice round of applause to the Canada Reads team that worked so incredibly hard to make this week happen? Thank you. Poor Dave, I'm asking them to clap partly for you and you had to ask for your own applause. That one they could have done on their own, I think. Okay, let's get our panelists out. First panelist, I've uh, been just killing it all week and uh, I don't think I'm gonna give them the grand introductions anymore because you know them all, you've gotten to know them or most of you have anyway. Tom O'Pinniket, let's give him a, a huge round of applause. Whether it's the hat or it's the book, the people like something today. Next up, big round of applause, Mojda Jamalzada. Let's give her some love as she comes in. <laughs> okay, that's great. great colors. Next up, Jeannie Becker, everyone. Huge round of applause for Jeannie. Thank you. Thank you. The Tornado Man. Greg Johnson, everybody. Let's give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> Owning the room, Greg Johnson. And last but not least, Julie Black, everyone. Big round of applause for Julie Black. I could hear her. Yeah. We heard you backstage. Oh, that's my bestie. <laughs> Still showing love, even if the book ain't here. She here, right? You here. Mm hmm. I think. Ah, <sighs> yeah. <coughs> you started the week in a jean jacket. I know. You build. You build sometimes, right? <laughs> I start with a bow tie, I can only go down from there. So we end with a bow tie. I know, I feel like you're disappointed in me. You're like, I thought well, we could hang I, out. You got, a, I can't you hang got out a pink with... jacket, you got a fedora on today, and I'm wearing the same damn thing I've worn Greg, you, you left Saskatchewan knowing exactly what the plan was. At no yeah. point were you gonna put on a hat. But when I saw this thing, I was like, imagine if I had one of those ones with like a side thing and a feather sticking out. And... Side thing. You side. know how it, like, you pin the side of the hat up and the feather oh, stick? Oh, right, 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 yeah. I will, uh, Jeannie, you're across from me. If one of my buttons bursts, maybe you can just give me a little point so we know exactly what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> this is a shirt tight buttons? shirt. Yeah. Well, yeah, dapper, man. yeah thank dapper. you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide. Okay, no, it's fine. It's good. I'm just gonna be sucking in my gut for uh, an hour and 20 minutes. Don't you always? Yes. Most imagine, yes. If, More imagine so if you and I would have accidentally wore the same thing. How embarrassing I would that know, have been? Right? right? Like the other day, you that were that. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Luckily, you consulted each other before. Yeah. The That's heels. Great. I know. Check out those heels. Are you wearing your? I'm, I'm wearing the heels oh, yeah. today, yeah. You're basically, it's gray, blue, and blue-gray. That's what you, <laughs> That's those are the very. Yeah. That's my palette. Color. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a pop pocket square sometime. Yeah, I think it could really. In my fishing shirt. <laughs> I think you get all your, like, you're, you hunt tornadoes. Like, yeah. you're like, I'm fine, man. I, I basically need to shop be... at Cabela's. I don't know who Cabela's is. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? Is that a Saskatchewan? Yeah. It's all good. <clears throat> okay, we are one minute to Here's show. Just a FYI for you guys. Whatever that means for you. Hmm? Emotional preparedness.
It's our final day here on the great Canadian book debate. We started with five great titles, each with the power to open your eyes. Three books have been eliminated. Two will go head to head today. Only one can win. Which one will it be? We'll find out soon. I'm your host, Ali Hassan, and this is Canada Reads. This is Canada Reads, Canada's annual title fight. Hello and welcome. Joining me for the final time are this year's panelists. Let me introduce them to you now. He's a sci-fi loving actor who has been passionately championing the novel American War by Omar El Akkad all week. It is the first of our final two titles on the table today. Welcome back, Tom Opinikit. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Happy to be here. Hi, Tom. She is a singer, activist, and television host who has been called the Oprah of Afghanistan. This week, she's shown that she may love books even more than Oprah does. She was defending the boat people by Sharon Bala, but it was eliminated on day one. Welcome back, Mojda Jamalzada. Thank you so much, Ali. She is a fashion legend with a star on Canada's Walk of Fame and an Order of Canada pin on her collar. She's been passionately championing the memoir Forgiveness, a gift from my grandparents by Mark Sakamoto this week. It is the other final book on the table today. Welcome back, Jeannie Becker. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> He's a photographer and a professional storm chaser. He isn't afraid to enter the eye of the storm. And he's shown this week he's not afraid of entering a heated debate either. He was advocating for the memoir Precious Cargo, my year of driving the kids on school bus 3077, but it was eliminated on day two. Welcome back, Greg Johnson. Thank you. She is a singer-songwriter who has worked with some of the biggest names in the industry and has been named one of the 25 greatest Canadian singers ever. She lent her powerful voice to a passionate defense of the YA novel The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Demeline all week, but it was eliminated yesterday. Welcome back, Julie Black. Yeah, welcome back, Julie Black. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Very good. Thank you. How are you today, Julie? Uh, I'm fantastic. I'm, yes. Yeah, beyond. That is the answer I expected. That's right. Although I know that, you know, we said goodbye to the book that you were championing. We said see you later. See, we said see you later. <laughs> see you again real soon. That's maybe. right. Yeah. The Marrow Thieves by Cherie Demeline uh, was, was voted off the table yesterday. You know, it's the last day of Canada Reads. This is a competition, but it is also a celebration of, of all five books. With that in mind, I wanted you to remind the audience. You know, why all of Canada should read The Marrow Thieves? Wow, well, Cherie de Malign, um, the, factually, she uses um, futurism to rewrite the past and reimagine the future. But what really helped me uh, in reading this book is to understand that we don't have to be our past, but we definitely have the power to, to rewrite and write our future. And to Cherie specifically, she didn't let life pin her down before she decided to get up. And I think it's a message that we all could definitely get from this book. The Mirror Thieves um, opened my eyes to residential school, quiet genocide, community struggle, and assimilation. But it also let me know that through the struggle, there's still laughter. There's still you know, falling in love, um, you know, coming together and celebrating you know, in spite of what's happening. I think that's a message that the youth need to know. Uh, this book needs to be in our schools. Absolutely. This concept could be adapted in a semester, a term, like grab five books, do it in our school, CBC. How about we do this twice a year? You know, it's been 17 seasons. How about we do this once a month? There's so many books <laughs> out there. No, for real. There's lots of books out there. And um, in closing, <clears throat> I really um, want everybody to know that what I do got me on the show, mm -hmm. but it highlighted who I am and my character. And it's really helping me, fi it helped me find a new, uh, a new cause. And I'm excited to be a part of this conversation and narrative for the rest of my life. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. 
that uh, that suggestion that we do this once a month made a few people in the control room just fall over. I heard a bunch of thuds in my ear. <clears throat> but it is a great suggestion. Greg, how are you today? I I'm doing great. I I'm obviously disappointed, like like Julie, that uh, the book I was defending, Precious Cargo, Love Precious Greg Cargo. Davidson. I mean, it was a, a great read. I think anybody anybody in the audience who's read it will attest to the Woo! fact that it's an amazing book. Well, sure. Right? Well, you, can, you have one final opportunity now to tell all of Canada why they should read this book well, if they I mean, haven't. This, this book is a celebration. Uh, Precious Cargo is a celebration uh, of kids with special needs, people with special needs. This is a celebration, this book. It, 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 it reminds us not to avoid people with special needs. They're just as important and just as powerful and just as emotional. And as Julie said on day one, they get horny just like They get horny else. just they get, like they us. Get, they, they, they express emotions and they have uh, real lives that need to be celebrated. We don't cross the street uh, to avoid them. And, and, and uh, that's, what, that's what this book is about. Craig's memoir, Precious Cargo, his, his year driving these kids was an awakening for him. Mm. And I truly believe it was the book to open our eyes. I still obviously, is. well, yeah, say I mean, it's still, it, yeah, that's it one is, book to open is. our eyes. But I, here's the thing is that it, it's, uh, it's, it will change people's perceptions, and that's an important thing, and that's what literature and reading are all about. Thank right. you, Greg Johnson. I know that on your to-do list today, it was uh, one of the things was say the word horny on television again. <laughs> and, so you can check that out. Well, yeah. He was, was kind of... <laughs> Jamazada, how are you today? I'm good, thank you, Ali. Oh. How are you? You were championing the novel, The Boat People, by Sharon Bala. Yes. It was the first title eliminated this year, which is always a tough position to be in. Uh, I wanted to give you one last chance as well to share with Canada why they should read this book. I think it was a little bit tough because you know it was the first one to go and I didn't have much time to discuss why I had chosen it. So uh, just a few minutes of discussions on the book. Um, and so you know uh, it, was, it was out too soon. The reason I chose this book and thought it would open Canada's mm -hmm. eyes is because this is a land of immigrants. Everyone here has won the lottery at some point or another in history. Really? Um, other than indigenous people, of course. Um, at one point or another, whether it was our parents, grandparents, ancestors, uh, they've all had their struggles getting to this land. So um, at this point, also, we're facing the worst refugee crisis in history. Reading this book not only allows us to look at the refugee crisis on a with a different perspective, but it reminds us of what our um, our own family members at one point in history have gone through. Like I. Uh, I kind of became like Priya in, you know, the, the character the in the book, the, the second well, generation. The lawyer, yeah. The lawyer. And the boat people. And I almost, I almost forgot, or I hadn't really realized the realness of what my parents, the reality of what my parents had actually gone through until I read it. So, you know, at some point or another, um, I, I know that every Canadian either is an immigrant at one point or knows someone who has gone through these struggles, and that's why I think this book is such an important book for us to read. Thank you, Mojda. <laughs> okay. Well, panelists, those were the three titles we've said goodbye to so far, but you're not done yet. You all have one more vote to cast. There are two books left, American War and Forgiveness. Tamo, Jeannie, it is up to you to convince your fellow panelists today that the book that you are defending is the one that deserves to win Canada Reads. We'll begin by reminding everyone what the books are about. Then you'll have 60 seconds to make your opening, opening argument. Okay, let's start with you, Tom. But first, let's remind everyone what American War is about. American War is the story of a second American Civil War. The American South, 2074. It's a book set in the future, but it's concerned almost exclusively with the present and the past. And it's a story primarily of a single family, the Chestnuts. Surratt's life would be defined by drought, drones, and war's simple slogan. You can understand why somebody does something, even something horrible. If it had been you, you'd have done no different. Tamo, you have 60 seconds. 
Julie, you said American war is about America, so that's why I lost your vote. The issues covered in this book, climate change, radicalization, child soldiers are global issues facing all of humanity. Greg, the world is indeed a beautiful place, and books like Precious Cargo do their part to make it better. Right here in Canada, over 80 Indigenous communities don't have access to clean drinking water. There's six times higher rate of suicide with Indigenous youth, 11 times with Inuit. The recruitment of child soldiers by extremist groups in the Middle East and Africa is on the rise. There's been a 50% decrease in renewable fresh water in the world, so life ain't so beautiful right here in Canada and abroad for many people. Jeannie, you said American war is about revenge. In Omar's words, a part of this book is about the universal nature of revenge, that when people endure enough injustices, they inevitably react in the same way. As demonstrated by Mahindan and the Bow people, Frenchie and Merrill Thieves, and Surratt in American War. This book had to be placed in our backyards to elicit the response it's been receiving. Omar's asking hard questions. Do we continue to ignore these people and their struggles? And what can we do about it? I say let's hear the truth, find our compassion, let's understand, amend, and heal. Tom O'Pinnikit telling us why American War should win Canada Reads. Thank you, Tom Jeannie, before you make your case for, your, for forgiveness, let's remind everyone what it's all about. Forgiveness is the story of both sides of my family during the Second World War. Her, a victim of internment. Him, a prisoner of war. Decades later, they share a grandson. The final third of this book was my own issues with forgiveness and that had everything to do with the death of my mother who was a wonderful mother when she was healthy but she was an alcoholic life taught his grandparents a lesson they passed on to him forgiveness Jeannie one minute is on the clock tell us why forgiveness should win Canada reads Despite the ravages of war, both Mitsui Sakamoto and Ralph McLean maintain their dignity in the face of tragedy and injustice. They opted to view life through the lens of forgiveness. They rose from the ashes, rebuilt their shattered lives, and raised children with compassionate hearts, who in turn went on to raise their own loving families. It's this precious legacy of Mitsue and Ralph that this book celebrates, a roadmap to inner peace that shows us that by letting go, rising above anger and resentment, and keeping open hearts and minds, we can be healed. Forgiveness sheds light on a shameful chapter in Canadian history, and at the same time is an eye-opening testament to courage, acceptance, and living in love. Most importantly, this book is an ode to the power of telling personal stories to inspire future generations and help heal the world. Thank you, Jimmy. There you have it. The two remaining books are American War by Omar El Akkad and Forgiveness by Mark Sakamoto. Which one will win? We'll find out soon. But first, it's time to debate. <laughs> All right, this year's theme is one book to open your eyes. With this in mind, Greg, Mojda, Julie all brought different books to the table. So for this round, I'm going to ask you, Tamo and Jeannie, to convince our three free agents at the table what matter, that, that what matters to them can be found in your book. So, in her defense of the boat people, Mojda said, the boat people gives the refugee crisis a human face. It's about opening your doors to someone who has lost their home, loved ones, and everything they've known. How does American War address this, Tama? Well, it addresses it with the main character. It's all, the, the, these two books are more similar than the other ones. Um, this is about, this is about refugees, this is about displacement, this is about war and people who are affected by war, this is about agency. Omar talked specifically about agency in the book. The, the, to have a home, to have a place where you feel secure and that you can actually raise your status through work and aspiration, that's taken away from you when you're put in a refugee camp, when you're a victim of war. And this, as a result, what happens with that is, 
children are radicalized because they have no control, because they have no say in their future um, or in their conditions, and they feel helpless. And this is why children of war, this is why it's the recruitment of soldiers is such a big issue on the planet today. Um, Romeo Dallaire, I mentioned him yesterday. This is one of the most respected generals and humanitarians on the planet right now. The work he's done is incredible. He saved tens of thousands of lives in Rwanda just by being there. But he's been incredibly scarred by it. Romeo Dallaire has said that the greatest threat to humanity, the, great, the greatest weapon of mass destruction, guess what it is? Child soldiers. Child soldiers. The damage that it does, generation after generation, um, uh, trying to reintegrate a child soldier back into a community, the harm that it does is, is, uh, is unfathomable. My point being about all of this is that unless we allow people to tell their truths, unless they're allowed to tell their story, unless we acknowledge it, that insidious cycle goes on and on again and it keeps happening, as is in the case in the indigenous in Canada, as is the case with uh, Surratt. I think Surratt would have been taken in a different direction in the book. Can I jump if she in? She had the right mentor. What she didn't have is she had someone like Gaines mm -hmm. who took her in the wrong direction. And unfortunately, those people are all over the planet willing to take advantage of people like that. I, I got to jump in here because I, I think you're <clears throat> right. Everything you've said is, is on point. But the question is how does this book and, uh, relate to uh, American war? Well, I, well the saw the, I saw the boat people as being. Uh, hopeful. I, th I saw the boat people as being, yes, there was a, uh, a backstory about the, the war and, and why they left Sri Lanka, but the whole story was about this hope of reconnection and, uh, and with his life. son and, and a new life. Weren't you complaining about the end? Uh, what's that? Weren't you complaining about the end? I, believe you I didn't like the ending. The I yeah. didn't like the ending, but that's just because I didn't think there was resolution. Mm -hmm. Did you find but, there was hope no, in the end? Oh, we, totally we had a there discussion was hope. On the, yeah. 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 Totally yeah. there was hope. And I, don't, I didn't feel that same level of hope in American war. I saw it as being a very negative message. Was as that the question to about hope? hope? The question is not about hope. The question about is about the boat people giving the refugee crisis a human face. Well, and we are asking how American that, yeah. war, and, and I think you did, mm -hmm. Tamo. Jeannie, you can, you can come in as well. And, and uh, well, how does forgiveness address this? Well, it certainly gives uh, the whole uh, uh, concept of displacement a human face. Um, these people uh, were victimized by their situations, um, and they're living, breathing, uh, 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 sadly, Mitsui has passed on. Ralph McLean is a living, breathing eyewitness to uh, th this horrifying world that... Mark's uh, grandfather, who we heard earlier this week. That's right, yeah. who was uh, in his 90s and, um, and living uh, out west. Uh, you know, I, I, it, this, it, it, it's a true story um, of, of people who uh, have lost uh, their, their community. Um, it's about loss of family, but it's about finding and rebuilding new family. Um, and it's about what I think every every immigrant that comes to this country with the hopes and dreams and will to, uh, to you know, rise from their ashes and start something new. I mean, that's exactly what, what these people do in both cases. I, I just want to say something about American War, because it's a juicy read, for sure. And I think that Canada is so passive sometimes about these subject matters that what I enjoyed about the book is being able to, to imagine these occurrences happening and not sit you know, behind the Buffalo border and not be able to do anything about it. No different than sitting behind CNN or sitting behind, like, you know, I think as Canadians, if we don't read what's going on in these other places, and be like, even in, through fiction, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then how are we really going to even hit a Google and say, like, oh, what if? Could this actually have, you know, the what if? And that's what I enjoyed about American I War. I think it's easy to forget, though, the, that, um, that uh, uh, Omar is a, a journalist for a large part of his career who covered Guantanamo Bay. Mm the Afghan war, the Black Lives protests in Ferguson, Missouri, mm -hmm. okay? He's covered and seen some horrible things, the Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. Everything that's in this book is based on things that have happened, mm -hmm. that he's witnessed or read about. I want to move on history. to Greg's book now, which in his defense of Precious Cargo, <laughs> Greg had said that it tackles tough subject matter with grace, dignity, and a, and a sense of humor, a little bit of humor. <laughs> Jeannie, how does forgiveness address this? Again, I, I, I just go back to the way that these people uh, managed to find, uh, you know, the, 
the light um, in the tunnel and uh, had reason to move on. Um, they were able to, uh, to leave the, the sadness, the darkness, the hell behind them. And, uh, and you know, when you think of how um, Mitsue uh, reacted uh, to the first time, you know, meeting Ralph, um, you know, can you imagine, you know, that, that encounter it was just so, so special, so, so scary, you'd think. You know, he's looking someone, you know, in the eyes who was, who was Japanese. The Japanese were his tormentors for, for five long years, yet he was able to put that aside and, and, and see the love. And, and she worked so hard to try and please him. You know, she's worried about cooking the right thing for, you know, for the first meal they would have together. Uh, there's just so much humanity uh, in this book. And when you talk about humanity, and you know when Julie uh, has all you know talked about what made her book *The Merrill Thieves* so wonderful, you talked about that community and that you know that's life. Yeah, it is. It's about love. It's about falling in love. It's about uh, looking at each other, you know, in the eye and, and accepting each other, warts and all. And uh, I think that's that's what we see here in *Forgiveness*. I wanted to, <clears throat> to weigh in on this as well. Can Grace, dignity, again? and a little bit of humor. Were, uh, were, were what, what Greg liked most about Precious Cargo. Uh, how does American War address that? Well, I don't know how it, uh, grace, dignity, and, and... A little and, bit of humor. Yeah, I don't know if there's a lot of humor in this book, but like the point I made yesterday, uh, humor is not essential in a book. Sometimes when you're telling these hard truths, there's not a lot of humor. There's some fun, I found some funny parts in that book, though. There definitely you know, is. Part, like what she was, when they're naked in the... When they're, when they're, in, the, in, the, in the crap creek? In the crap creek. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is also based <laughs> on a real thing that Omar Emerald experienced. Creek. Emerald yeah. Creek. I got a yeah, big visual, exactly. and bald head and naked. That was That's funny. a good point. <laughs> I mean, listen, you know, I have twin sisters, so twins are dear to me, too. Yeah. I get twins who run in my family, and so a lot of the, the relationship between those two, because they were so different, mm -hmm. and yet they loved each other so much, there's beautiful humor. There's, there's grace and humor in that. There's grace in the way her mother tried to keep her dignity and uh, survive and get ahead and even extend a helping hand to people who were against her helping hand in the refugee camp. She was trying to find some agency. She was trying to keep some status and some grace and some, uh, and some compassion for other people, even though they were coming from different sides of the conflict. Mm -hmm. Again, like I mentioned yesterday, though, you know, oftentimes these hard stories, they don't have a lot of, a lot of humor. They're not lighthearted. But they're truth, and we need to hear them. Greg Johnson, your thoughts on that? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I think uh, Tom has got it right. Uh, Julie's got it right. There is those moments in the book. I don't think they're obviously a central theme. And as you said, they don't have to be a central theme. Um, part of what I loved about American War was Surratt's character. Um, the development that Omar gave that character in the book, I think we all, you know, all mentioned it yesterday that uh, probably one of the strongest characters in all the books. Um, she had her moments, the, the Emerald Creek moment. Uh, uh, but, you know, again, just for me and Tom, you know where I, I fall on this, right? It's, it, I, I just, I don't share that same world view that says things are as bad as, and I get it, there's pockets. I get it, there's pockets. The and I know right now, Moses, because well, yeah, we, had, we, we talked about it over lunch this. yesterday. Yeah. Your personal experience is so different than mine, I can't... Your jaw was on the floor. <laughs> yeah, my jaw was literally on the floor. So I can't, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not relevant and I'm not saying that, that, um, uh, that it's not important. I'm sure it is. I'm just saying my worldview is, and my, the, the, the message I'm, I want to send to my kids is, like, this is a wonderful place and we can make well, it better. I'm sure, I'm sure listeners are curious right. about uh, some uh, hints at the jaw-dropping moments at least, but most I want you to weigh in before we move on. Well, I said I, I go back to Afghanistan. I actually lived there, you know, it's a war zone. And he, um, Greg asked me, so do you have security? And I explained the kind of security that actually greets me at the airplane, not the airport. Mm. And I don't go through passport control. And they take me to three armored vehicles, two of them filled with... Uh, uh, army men with AK-47s, and I'm in the <gasps> middle uh, car like with just my mom. Can't, we can't. Uh, and we that's can't how I travel you. around yeah. Afghanistan. So it's just that's why it's really difficult for me to go back. Because Greg, do you not see that that's the point that? though? Yeah. Like for yeah. instance, in our own backyard, yeah. the point that I made in here very but quickly. Okay, passive. life is great. There's wonderful things for a lot of Canadians. Yeah. 
for a, a whole bunch of Canadians, Indigenous and a whole Canadians. Bunch of white Canadians. Yeah, Let's keep it real. Exactly. Indigenous like, Canadians. I know a lot of white people like white people. Getting a drink out. of water, clean Y'all water in the middle life. of an isolated community in goddamn northern Canada. You can't give your baby clean water? I, I, that is disgusting what's happening in our backyard. If you're I'm, not on, conscious I'm that, on the same team. If you don't here. hear that story, you're not open to it. Listen, I'm on the same team, but what I'm saying is what I'm saying is there are there are battles in the first and the second world war where more Canadians were killed yeah. in the first and second world war you know, on a single day than all the American troops okay, that have been killed since forward? the Afghanistan war started. Teach now? So I'm just, all I'm saying is, is that uh, if we compare the world, planet earth yeah. to uh, 500 years ago, yeah. to 100 years ago, yeah. to even 50 years ago, yeah. We're in a much better situation. Well, they're still okay, because we're having they're these shooting conversations. Shooting black 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 for sure. I agree with that. Let's move on to the Marrow Thieves so we have time for all three of these uh, books and these panelists. So Marrow Thieves, uh, you know, in her defense of this book, Julie had said, we don't have to be our past, but we have the power to rewrite the future. So how does... How does your book address this? I'd, I'd like Jeannie to weigh on that first. Well, again, I, you know, so much in the Merrill Thieves was about the importance of storytelling and remembering the stories and, and really learning from the elders and learning about the way it was. That's exactly the, the premise of this book. It's all about the intergenerational uh, dialogue and, and trying to learn from our past in order to move forward. I mean, it, always, you know, with an eye on the past, of course, but not getting hung up on it in order to reinvent and reimagine and, and really move forward in brave, new, uh, wondrous ways. And, you know, it's, it's, it's so much about healing. I mean, in the Merrill Thieves, there were, you know, there was so much healing that was going on all the time. I mean, that was one of the beautiful aspects of the book. And, and I, I believe this book is about those very same things. There's healing, then there's action with the healing. And that's, that's the thing, I, I, you know, it's important for us to really look at what book is going to have Canada open their eyes to what is happening on today. And yes, we, we celebrate and we heal and we kumbaya and we light oh, but you, on what a, about what's you know what happening I mean? with ourselves? I mean, I mean this that's is a the, good, yeah, we that's gotta amazing. change the world, but people are really, there are a lot of like screwed up people in There's the world. There's a lot you know? of colonial There's privilege There's a lot of people happening. that really This need, room right? excluded, of course, and this so, studio excluded. Yeah. And, and There's a lot of people food. that have to work on themselves. I mean, when we There's see a lot people of people who sit in their in the cottages world. in their homes and don't have an experience like others and think that it's, well, you know, let me swipe my visa card and make a donation, but I don't live this experience. What are we doing to change the current circumstances? We just had a pope say he's not saying I'm sorry to indigenous Canadians when he said that in 2015. It is happening right now. I'm not saying it's got I, to change. I, I, yes, we forgive. I believe in Jesus. But why do are you others, me, do Julie? Why are no, no, you no. attacking it, me? No, no, I totally get what you're saying, and I, I have. Ooh, 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 I'm, ooh. Hold on, we're live right now. For... Why are you attacking me? I'm not oh, attacking. The truth no, hurts. I didn't say anything to attack you, Jeannie Becker. I said nothing oh, about Jeannie Becker. No, no, I, I'm just saying you're... I, Did I, I say feel anything about Jeannie Becker? I just feel that you're speaking to me um, like I, I don't believe that. I no, totally get what so you're saying. So let me saying. tell you what you just said. I feel like. So whatever you're feeling, take it to the altar, because I'm not the one that's responsible for your feelings. Okay, Thank let's you. move on to Tomo here. Let's move on to Tomo. Can you repeat it? The question, I need to see that uh, question again. Can we bring it back up on the screen? It's, Julie, you're in, the, in your defense of the Marrow Thieves, you talked about how we can't, we don't have our past, but we, but we can rewrite our future. We don't have to be our past, but we can rewrite our future. So the question is, how does American war address that? Well, I think the, the, the central thing that I've been arguing, hopefully effectively over the last four days, is that you guys, there's a cycle of mistakes that we keep doing. There's a cycle, and, it, and the, the cycle is, it's, it's exactly what Julie's talking about. It's, it's about. it's about, we need action to move forward, but it's as a result of inaction. And part of that inaction is not hearing the stories. They are hard truths. That's what this book is talking about. We have become shut off to other people's plights and struggles. Overseas, this book had to be written and switch roles with America and the Middle East, what's happening right now, and put it in our backyard for people to feel compassion for it to resonate with them. People were, this book has been incredibly successful in the States. Why? Because it was set in America's backyard. Because it's plausible. Because these times are so divisive right now and it's stressful. Again, I'm coming down to it. It's about hearing, it's about feeling, it's about compassion and the lack of it right now. We've got a major issue in Canada right now, and I, I really, in a positive note, you guys, we can bridge this. Mm -hmm. This 
country has the most potential out of any country out there. We can be the model for all countries. I truly I believe that. But we have to hear the truth. And it's going to be hard and it's not going to happen real quick. And it's going to take some work. And truth and action and understanding will result in us moving forward. And it's not indulging in pain. And we're going to sit in there. We're going to bitch and we're going to complain about bad things that have happened. It's about hearing it. People need to be acknowledged. They need to hear that their stories have been heard for us to move forward. OK, we're going to leave it there. That is it for this round. <laughs>
my mother's uncles, cousins, friends, siblings who she lost in residential school were not given that outlet. They weren't acknowledged. It was never acknowledged. This is about truth. We gotta hear the hard truth. We can heal, we can move forward. Okay, time, we'll leave it there. That is it for this round. <laughs> Jeannie and Tamo, you've made it to the final round and it has impressed a few people. Hi Tamo, this is Kathy Peltier. Uh, you've really made a dream come true for me after 35 years of teaching, but uh, one of my students has made good in a big way and I wanted to congratulate you and tell you that I'm listening to Canada Reads. I was thrilled to hear your name, that you were gonna be a part of it. And I've told all my friends and relations who are all big fans, so congratulations, keep up the good work, and good luck. Hi, Jeannie, voice yeah. out of your text. It's Moses, Moses Neimer. Remember me? Yes, City TV, much music, and all Moses of those Neimer. other wonderful things that you did at the time. So, Jeannie, uh, I know just how dogged and determined you can be and that you almost never take no for an answer. Forgiveness is a story of family uprootedness, much like your own story and mine. So I know you'll give it all your passion for the win. A little blast from the past, that was Kathy Peliche, Tamo's third grade English teacher at Whitehorse <laughs> Elementary School, and Moses Snymer, co-founder of City TV, the network that launched fashion television. All right, and that's uh, obviously an emotional moment for you. Jeannie, you haven't heard from Moses in quite some time. Oh, I, I hear from him all the time in my own way. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was uh, a, an amazing mentor to me yeah. in many different ways. Um, but I want to say, for the benefit of you know, everyone out there listening, everyone in the studio, all my, this has been the biggest stretch for me, emotional stretch. It's the reason I wanted to do it, and it's the reason I, I can't stand doing it, you know? And it's funny because, and Moses, it won't, I don't think it'll offend him because it's, I, I've always said to Moses, you know, like, I, I love you and I hate you. You know, I, I, he inspired the best in me and, uh, and in some ways maybe brought out the worst in me, but mm. the story has a happy ending because I'm very happy with, you know, who I am and how I turned out. This exercise has been like, Nothing I could ever have imagined. Mm -hmm. I knew it would be a heady exercise. I knew it would take me out of my comfort zone. I didn't realize just how close it would uh, draw me to my own personal truths and remind me most wonderfully, and this is the happy part about it, why it's important to have a point of view in this world and, and really view life in a way that's gonna get you through it. You know, and whatever route you choose and, uh, <coughs> you know, whether it's filled with, uh, with light and laughter, or whether it's, it's filled with a lot of, you know, seriousness and, and, and maybe, you know, a darkness, and, you know, that's gonna get you through whatever, but we all just have to keep going. You know, we just all have to put one foot in front of the other and, uh, you know, no matter what happens, just uh, carry on, and, and again, it, it brings me back to why this book resonated so much with me, because it's about uh, ultimately survival. Thank you, Jeannie. We, uh, well said. Well said. Yeah. If, if people are just tuning in, the Moses that brought the best and the worst out of you was Moses Snymer and not the, the prophet uh, Moses. <laughs> 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 if they just tuned in at that moment, there might be some confusion. Passover is coming up this yeah, weekend. You, you, uh, you have he's to got think about him again soon. <laughs> I'm Ali Hassan. This is Canada Reads on CBC Radio 1 and Sirius XM. Okay, panelists, let's get back to the debate. Okay. Let's all be nice for a moment. That's, uh, this is, that's what this round is about. I want to ask everyone around the table what they liked about forgiveness, even you, Tamo. So, Julie, <laughs> what did you like about forgiveness? Oh, my goodness. Um, I, loved, I loved that um, we were able to follow Ralph's story, follow a few stories, in fact. Um, the war, uh, the way the war scenes were written, I felt like I was actually, like, right there. 
um, in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of tormented way. You know, it's one of those things where it's like looking through the peephole, you get a bird's eye view, like, wow. Um, you know, the aspect of mental health and, and how a relationship could really, um, as a woman, you know, getting sucked into certain relationships and how that can really take control of your decisions. You know, that's uh, where, where mom ended up. You know, that was, that was really, you know, there's a lot of stuff. It was really, really, really beautiful. Mojda, what did you like about forgiveness? Uh, just about everything. I think that this book is exceptionally written. It's from the heart, you can feel it. You know, I'm a singer, like Julie knows. Um, they say when you, when you write your own song and you actually present it, it's a lot different than, you know, uh, singing somebody else's is because it comes from the heart, right? And it's real. And so it, it gets people. And um, this book is exactly just that. As I read through it, I felt every single word. It was so powerful. It was so magical, so exceptional. Um, the most important thing, I think, is there are entire nations at war with each other or civil wars because of uh, the lack of forgiveness or you know, not being able to forgive the past or history, and individuals themselves. Individuals, I know that, I think every individual comes across at one point having to forgive somebody and some choose not to. And for, like, for, like Forgive Jeannie me said, for moving on to Greg Mosley. Oh, Just, okay. I'm so sorry. We, uh, okay. I want everybody to weigh in on this <coughs> and I want you to say something me, nice for about me, forgiveness. Oh, I guess I gotta use this. For me, the, uh, the highlight uh, for sure out of all the books, including Precious Cargo, the highlight for me in this competition was reading about Grandpa Ralph's story. Uh, Mitsui was, uh, you know, obviously the internment was a tragic thing and, and uh, you know, same with Mark's relationship with his mother. But, but I was open to my, my eyes were open to Ralph's struggle in the prisoner war camp. I had a, a grandfather who fought in the Second World War and, uh, you know, heard stories, but never really put it into that sort of depth. And so that was uh, not only an eye opener, but that was the, the one thing out of every book that I took away the most. Mark's an okay. amazing writer, and I love meeting his family uh, this week, too. Let's, uh, let's uh, end with you, Tom. I, I've spoken on it many times, yeah. but I'll, I'll say there's, there's so many things that connected to me in this book. My grandfather, my British grandfather, was a RAF pilot. He crashed six times. He was a war hero. The exact same thing. This book connected to me very personally. I, too, just like Mark, come from two opposite cultures. I have an indigenous mother and a British father. There's so many things that connected to me. I know what it's like to love an alcoholic. I have many of them in my family, unfortunately, people who struggle with addiction and substance abuse. There's things that connected to me and emotionally, whew, man, it was a heavy ride for me at times. I connected to that war story, Ralph's. I mean, it's powerful. That sh There's one of the most powerful lines in that book is when he's going through his darkest time and he talks about how loving an alcoholic one of the hardest things about it is, is that it affects you at the weirdest times. His wedding, the birth of his daughter, all these times, right? I know that, that touches me personally. I hate, it makes me emotional thinking about it. But his wife said to him, remember what you're made of. And that speaks volumes about the people he comes from, both sides, his Scottish Canadian father and his, his Japanese grandmother. Tama, let's give some time for American War. Uh, uh, Mojda, why don't we start with you? Same, same question. What did you like about American War? Um. And it was, it was very dark, it was very difficult to read at times. I mean, so was Forgiveness, you know, they're not easy books to go through. But Surratt and her character and um, the, way that, the way that Omar al Akkad has created this, this world and has flipped things around and I, I thought that was a genius move and um, I, I just found it so interesting and I think Really, really important is the uh, the the climate change. You know, when he brought up it's it's so important. It's something that we have mm -hmm. to really take into consideration. It might not ha happen in 50 years, like you mentioned, but th it, this could That's be a, a possibility yeah. in the future. The, the for you sure. mentioned was Greg, and so Greg, let me flip. Yeah, you. I mean, your it, kids are going to be alive in 50. Yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. it, it may not. It, it's fiction, right? So we all get that. Uh, here's what I loved about American War, and uh, uh, it's been said around the table that it's a hard read and a dark read. It's not a hard, it wasn't a hard read for me. I thought it was a page flipper. I mean, I, I found it wildly entertaining. Um, obviously, I've mentioned it before, it didn't fit my world view, but um, I, I, it was a, an excellent, uh, the writing was fantastic. The, the message, as you said, is important, uh, but I just found it entertaining. Like, it, uh, from a, 
pure fun read, that's where I where I. We have very little felt. time left for yeah. this round. Thank you, Greg. Julie? Um, I related to many characters, the twins, especially um, in American War. But the biggest part for me was the, 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 the father making that sacrifice early on. And being of you know Caribbean descent, I know many fathers who went off to do farm work had to leave the kids. Some of them didn't come home. You know, tobacco farms, like stuff that's happened where the mothers, not by choice, end up being single mothers. And so uh, that whole book just kind of, it, it pulled me right from beginning to end. Jeannie, we'll end family. with you on this. We have a uh, little uh, bit of time. Uh, I, I was, you know, it's funny when you say entertain because as much as, you know, I, I have said in the past how it was a torment for me to read, <clears throat> it was, it's so well written. Um, I think it, it's very, um, very visual, very cinematic. Mm -hmm. So that's what held me to it. Um, you know, the, the imaginings of uh, Omar were really what, what kept me in there. Um, the vision, you know, of course, very dark, but what an interesting take. And certainly uh, a, a parts of it were kind of plausible to me. Um, others, maybe not. But again, it was a work of fiction, so I could accept it. OK, thank you, Jeannie. That is it for this round. Okay, we are, we are getting tight on time. So Tamo, Ajini, you, uh, you have 30 seconds each to make your final case for why your book should win. Tamo's gone first all week, so I'm gonna give him a break. Jeannie, that means you're up first. One last chance to convince your fellow panelists that forgiveness should win Canada Reads. I just think that everything that this uh, book stands for is uh, what we all stand for in, the, in how maybe little or how much I've gotten to know you all over this past little while. Uh, I think, again, this is a book about healing oneself before we can really have the, the power to go on and grapple with the bigger picture. And uh, I, there's, so much, uh, there's so much individual uh, pain you know, in, in all our lives. We've all been through so very much, but uh, what, what a brilliant message to not only get, but keep remembering time and time again. Okay, Tamo, your turn. You have 30 seconds. Last chance to convince your fellow panelists that American War should win Canada Reads. Let's hear the hard stories. We have to hear them. We have to acknowledge them. I encourage all Canadians of every background and ethnicity to tell their true stories, especially Indigenous writers. That, that is a responsibility we have right now. I want to thank you guys for all your passionate defenses of your books. You inspired me and you gave me pause and thought. I want to end with an expert from the book, something that Surratt wrote. When I was young, I lived by the sea with my father and my mother and my sister. I was happy then. Thank you, Tomo. That is it. We have arrived. It's time to cast your final vote. This vote is exactly like the vote you've cast the last three days. Look at those ballots, open up the ballots, and you are voting to eliminate a title. The last book standing will win Canada Reads. Panelists, mark an X beside the book that you want to eliminate. Vote against the book that you do not want to win. Michelle from the Canada Reads team is here again to take your ballots for you. Okay. <coughs> <clears throat> While we wait for these ballots to be uh, both completed and, uh, and picked up, let's, uh, let's talk about past winners. We're gonna have a winner very soon, but over the years, 16 fantastic titles have won CBC's Battle of the Books. You've read some of, the, uh, some of these books, books such as uh, In the Skin of the Lion by Michael Ondaatje. That was the very first winner back in 2002. There are some fans in our studio audience of that book and that, that author. Uh, a Complicated Kindness by Miriam Taves. That is a past winner. Book of Negroes by Lawrence Hill. So many uh, excellent books over the years. Last year, 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. Defended by Humble the Poet was the winner. Which book will become the next Canada Reads winner? <coughs> that is the question we're asking. It's been, uh, it, I, you know, I have no opinion as the, uh, as the host. I'm not supposed to have an opinion, but I'm impressed with everything that you guys brought to this table. Are and, you gonna uh, tell us who you think? Uh, I'm not gonna tell you. That's how no opinion works, Greg. No opinion. 
Uh, thank you so much for giving everything you had to this, to this competition this week. I have the ballots in hand. Let's start it off. Tom Opinikit, how did you vote? Uh, I, voted, <laughs> I voted against forgiveness. That is not unpredictable by any means. One vote against forgiveness. Jeannie Becker. I voted against American War. You did vote against American War. Anything other than that would be odd. Greg Johnson, how did you vote? Uh, I have to say, Tom, well, you almost, almost flipped the switch, but I voted American War. Voted against American War. Two votes against American War. A third vote will take it off the table. A vote for, for against forgiveness would tie things up. Julie Black, how did you vote? I voted against forgiveness. Okay, that's one vote against forgiveness. Sorry, two votes against forgiveness, two votes against American War. We are tied up, and that leaves it in the hands of Mojda Jamalzada. Why, why do I always I don't know, get in Mojda. this position? Like, we don't tell dude. you how to vote. This is all inside you. We are very tight for time. How did you vote? American War. I'm sorry. She voted against American War. And that means the winner of Canada Reads is Forgiveness. Congratulations, Jeannie. I, I, I want to give you a moment to, you know, there's Kleenex around your eyes right now, and obviously no, you, you probably don't. You have no wanna... idea. <laughs> My life has, uh, you know, really come full circle. I mean, I don't want to, you know, the, I mean, I didn't win. Mark Sakamoto and his brilliant book won. Mm -hmm. And the, the Sakamoto McLean families won. I mean, this is a family story. Well, we have a nice surprise for you. That's Mark Sakamoto on the phone right now. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Hello, Ali. How are you? I'm great. You have a, you have a, a little bit of time to uh, to connect with Julie. I know you'll be connecting tomorrow morning again on Q. Well, thank you very much. First thing I want to say, some of the it's last, JB. The last thing that I thought leaving the house was Jade saying on that fateful night, remember what you're made of. So thank you for that. And uh, Moshe and Greg and Julie and Ali, you guys have just done a terrific job. Listen to each other and a great service for books and readers and Canadian literature. Jeannie, the first thing I want to say is um, the Milan thing was totally a joke. <laughs> she dismissed but I owe you, it. I owe you a debt of gratitude. You held Ralph and Mitzway and Diane and Stan and all my loved ones so thoroughly in your heart. Um, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm forever grateful. And, and we'll share this uh, with your parents, Joseph and Brony, as well. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mark. Jeannie Becker, some final words. What a ride. Mm. I guess my final words are, you know what? As much as something might scare you, no matter, no matter how much you just, you just dread doing something, no matter how much every voice in your head saying, oh, you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to, just, just do it. Because this is what it's all about. Yeah. You really want to put yourself out there. Otherwise, yeah. it's just not, not worth the ride, you know? It, this has been, whew, it's gonna take me a while to come down. I'm glad it's a long weekend coming yeah, up, let me yeah. say. <laughs> all five of you uh, were very clear in the, in the fact, despite the fact that you are all performers in different ways, you are all out of your comfort zones mm -hmm. this week, and uh, it, it didn't affect you from bringing your passion to the table. Thank you so much. There you have it. Forgiveness is the winner of Canada Reads 2018. You can find out more when both Mark Sakamoto and Jeannie Becker are on cue tomorrow morning. Final thank you to this year's panel, Tamo Pinnikit, Moza Jamalza, the Jeannie Becker, Greg Johnson, and Julie Black. I'm your host, Ali Hassan. Thank you for joining us this week. Now get reading, Canada. Yeah. <laughs>
Canada Reads will continue right after this break. More debates coming up right after this break. No, we didn't like it. More debates coming up right after this break. Canada Reads will return. Stay tuned. Hey, we're going to stop right there. More coming up after the break. CBC's Battle of the Books continues after this break. <laughs> Final one, guys. Next up, who will be the winner of Canada Reads? That was a... Welcome to the live stream. Thank you for sticking around for our Q&A session. We're taking questions from the studio audience and from those of you in the online chat. If you're on Twitter and you have a question, you can send it to us now using the hashtag Canada Reads, hashtag Canada Reads. The producers in the control room will send a few of your questions my way. And if you're in the studio audience, we do have two producers uh, roaming around with microphones. Raise your hand and one of them uh, will make their way over to you. First question over here. <coughs> Hi there, for Mojda and Julie especially, with the worst case scenario from Tomo and the best case scenario from Greg, how would you help people bridge um, the Greg's comment about this is the best of times to be living in, which I heard um, also on the comment this mo or the, the current this morning, and moving forward so that we don't end up in a dystopian future? Um, well, you know, I could, I could say, yeah, I'm not on a plantation picking cotton, so it's better than then, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot of changes that need to happen. I can't have people look at my experience. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a black woman in Canada not living in an American experience, for example. My American family and friends and my cousins and young boys, they can't wear hoodies right now. But my nephew could go to Eaton Center with a hoodie and be okay. So there's a lot going on that we need to open our eyes to. Canada's very passive. I love my country, born at Mount Sinai. But let me tell you something, we're passive about systemic racism, about what's going on with our indigenous people, and we need to just speak up. <laughs> speak up, do something about it. Stop being so afraid. As much as I'm so grateful, you know, to be in Canada, and like Julie said, you know, I, um, a lot of us are in a really good position here. My work is all about women and youth outside of Canada, and it's in the Middle East and uh, war zones and Afghanistan. So it's, for me, on a daily basis, I'm not, I, I, I see despair and I see oppression. Um, I see hardship with people, and it's really hard for me to 
kind of, I mean, I, I live a double life. I'm here in Canada, I have this perfect life and I'm very privileged and I'm grateful for that. But I have this guilt, this heavy guilt when I look back on um, the fact that it, was, it, it would have been this close for me. Like I said, I, we want, you know, I feel like I won the lottery being here because I could have been one of those girls. So I'm constantly thinking what I can do and I use the opportunities given to me in Canada and the values that have been instilled in me in Canada to give back to those women and children in areas where they, it's exactly like the, um, what's in American war. So as much as I would love to stay positive, I, I see the dark side on a constant basis. Can I say one, one other thing? We need allies. We need you. We need, we need allies, seriously. Especially privileged allies yes. that aren't afraid to say something. That's huge. Yes. That's huge. Okay, we're gonna go online for a question. It is uh, from Twitter and it's for Tamo specifically, but I think everyone can weigh in on this. Rain City Reads asked, uh, was saying that you mentioned a stack of books that you are looking forward to reading once the debates are over. And uh, they're saying, I'd love to know what you're going to be reading next. Oh my God, my, my father is the most voracious reader I've ever met. It's, it's incredible how many books he can go through and do all his work. It astounds me, but he's constantly giving me books. It doesn't matter, I'm like, Dad, please stop, please stop. I'll go to see him for coffee, I get three more books. I got piles of books. Okay. Um, first up, you know what, I've always wanted to read uh, uh, Wab Canoe's autobiography. It's been on my list for a long time. I, I think Wab's gonna be the first indigenous Canadian prime minister. I'm making that bold statement right now. I wanna read his book. <clears throat> but I've also got some great fiction that I have to read. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of it. I just started the other night to take my brain off of all this. Remember I was saying I really wanted to yep. get to a book? I started a book, um, I can't even remember the title right now, but it's a book about, it's about, it's about the Pinan in, uh, uh, in Borneo. They're a, uh, an indigenous people there, and it's, it's about a really uh, interesting story about a, an American uh, who, who, who used uh, selling their art to make himself really quite wealthy, mm. and then a uh, very eccentric Swiss, Swiss man who went and lived with them and became one of the, like they accept him as one of, one of their own. And he actually ended up doing more work trying to save and conserve their, um, their forest and their natural habitat from um, encroaching mine development and all that than, than any of them were able to because What's of the fact ally? that he was a Swiss ally. guy. There's the ally. There's an ally. Mm -hmm. Pardon me? There you go, that's the title. I just started it yesterday and I'm already like six chapters in. Wow. Okay, Ella. anybody else have something? Are you gonna rest your eyes? Or are you gonna dig into another book? Is something else on the, on the docket? I got uh, the, the Romeo Dallaire book now. Uh, I mean, yeah. that is one of the things you convinced me on in this. Uh, Can I say something on there real here, quickly? Yeah. Just so you know, and you're, you're a happy, optimistic guy, and I celebrate that about yeah, yeah. you. This and you wouldn't crush. know that I actually am, too. From no, this and I, I gotta say, he is, actually. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this, is, is, this, is, this is a character. <laughs> it's emotional stuff. This brings up a lot of stuff with me, man. You know, they talk about generational you know, trauma and being passed on. That is a, that is a thing. I get, uh, my hackles get up, I get defensive, I get, you know, it's real. But I would just say to you, I would, I would urge some caution be in the right place in the right time. That is the heaviest book I've ever read and it affected me deeply for two years. Mm. It was hard to grapple with. So if you're looking for a Sunday read or something, you know, you know, you know the heaviness and the tone. I'm just saying, choose the time. You yeah. gotta choose the time to read. I mean, but just from your comments though, it sounds like it's a book it's a and must. a story it's a must that read. everybody needs to hear, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Just maybe not at Christmas time. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Your needs child's your... birthday, you're going on vacation, do not read it. Yeah, okay. okay. Anybody else? Any reading Hey, plans? man, I'm going back to the great B-I-B-L-E, man. The good old you're, Bible. Yeah, yeah, and you've got lines Bible. to learn. You've got lines got to learn. Lines you to had learn. scripts yes, to read. That's right, that's yeah. <clears throat> I got a copy of uh, Tina Brown's book for Christmas, Vanity Fair Diaries, but I, I didn't, I was dying to launch into it because that is about, you know, the world that I often sure. occupy. Um, but, you know, obviously I, I was too busy reading these other books, so I, I look forward to some levity with that. And I think I'm going to reread my parents' book. Um, entitled Joy Runs Deeper, their, uh, their memoirs that they wrote themselves, you know, decades ago and just published in uh, 2014 by the Azrieli Foundation um, that publishes Holocaust memoirs. And I think I, I owe them a big debt of gratitude for, uh, for bringing me up to see the world um, in the way that I see the world. And um, I think for the fact that I could champion Mark Sakamoto's book today, 
I think uh, it was totally uh, their spirit that drove me. Okay. Mojda, are you still filming? <laughs> Well, um, I got, I got a, a lot of readings. Red Dawn, by the way. Red just Snow. Little. Red Snow, great, great, great PR so on I my part. I finally got a lead Red role Snow. in a Canadian yes. film. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so I have, I'm nervous. I have a lot of reading to do. The yeah. script is like that thick. Wow. And, um, and I um, also, there's a book writ being written about me, and I don't mean to sound superficial or anything, but I have to read that too to make sure that all the facts are there. So I have a lot of reading to do with, with that alone, but I'm gonna select another pile of books just like this so that I can get something out of it while I you know, spend time reading. Okay, let's go to another audience question while we still have some time. Hello everybody, congratulations first of all on a very wonderful week of debating and it was very, very nice. You all, you all did a wonderful job. My question is actually a follow-up on the question you asked before. I was going to ask that question, and I'm going to ask you now. Uh, you all seem to gravitate towards nonfiction and biographies. What, do you, what are your thoughts about finding truth in fiction? Because you all seem to, want to, uh, want, uh, seem to think that realness is in nonfiction and not fiction, and uh, uh, importance of fiction. What do you guys think about it? Can I, start with I you? personally love fiction. Mm -hmm. I read a ton of it, mm -hmm. ton of it. It just you know it just happens to be that a lot of the books that we're reading on are based on, you know, some of them are are historically accurate and some of them are based on historically accurate things that have transpired, what have you. But I, I personally love fiction. They're both important. Mm -hmm. I'm really, it really depends on the mood that I'm in. I do try and read a book for, you know, books are all about reading them at the right time. You know what I mean? It's you. They're. You gotta know when to read the book. I very specifically, when I looked at these books, when I had to read them, I placed Precious Cargo in the perfect spot. I had to, because I started with this. It's heavy. Oh, yeah. It's big, you know what I mean? Please tell me you read Precious Cargo right after no, you read No, you know American what I did? War. I had to read Amer Merrill Thieves, because I knew I just had to, because it's personal to me, and I read it. And then after those two, I was like, I'm going to Precious Cargo. So I know like this you is, need a break after. I know this is, there's going to be some levity. I know there's going to be some lightness, and I'm going to laugh. I just have a feeling. And it did just that. And it helped me get through these books. And it, it was a, yeah, it was perfect. You know what's cool is American War, the boat people, and Marrow Thieves, there's so much truth in there. There's so much truth, like you have no idea. Um, and so, like, from these fictional books, that's what was so difficult for me is, like, um, as much as I love biographies and I love real um, true stories, these all resonated with me because I was like, holy, every single thing in these books are actually, you know, um, the truth. So the book, books like that, um, I love. Like, if I could relate to it and I could see the truth in it, definitely. I, th I think that artists, um, writers in particular, um, kind of tap into a different realm because it's a very, as a songwriter especially, it's like it's very spiritual. And so even though some things may come across or it's like, yeah, this is fictional, there's the power of vision, the power of dreams. You know, and art does imitate life often. How many times we're like, oh, wow, that actually happened. I, you know, read about that years ago. And, you know, it can, in fact, happen. So to keep our minds open. Any thoughts on that, Greg? Yeah, for me, this has actually been an eye-opening experience. I've, n I've never read fiction. Like, it's never been a, something I've read. But I, as Mosda said, these three uh, fictional books, I mean, at first, when I was reading Boat People, I thought, is this fiction? <laughs> or like, right? yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it yeah, really exactly. had that feel of, this is a so real, real story, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she clarified it, she, she clarified at the end of the book that, you know, she based it on, the real events, but she created the characters and she created the story. And, and yeah, it was it was her imagination. But the thing is, she's so on point that I actually asked her, I'm like, were you a refugee at one point? And she's like, no, because everything my family went through or everybody that I know has actually gone through the exact same um, horrifying. I felt, her, I felt her as Priya's character. That's yeah. That's how. That's how I. You know, having yes. met her, that's that's the character. And when I was reading the book, I actually like the vision of that character as she's walking in and out of the, the courtroom, I, I, I pictured it as, as Sharon. So as Sharon, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if, why, but that's, that's where I... There was a connection there. Yeah. I did find, you know, my father taught what was called third world fiction for, for like three decades. So V.S. Naipaul and Marquez and, uh, you know, Rohinton Mystery. These were, it's this like such an escape. So fiction was really escape for me, but I found, you know, these are memoirs, but this, Maybe because of Omar Alakad's uh, 
own journalistic background. It didn't feel like escape. It felt like it was real, even though clearly it's in the future. But I was like, this is so... Mm -hmm. And the exact same thing with the Marrow Thieves, dystopian or not, I was like... You know, both of them had this chilling element, which is why you had to go to Precious Cargo, where it, it lost the line with fiction and it felt almost uh, so real. Mm -hmm. So I was introduced to that for the first time, too. It wasn't the escapism that I'm, I'm used to. Right. Okay, online question. Jacqueline from Facebook asks, my 12-year-old wants to, to ask the panelists, what was your favorite thing about this week? Ooh. Jeannie, you've, uh, oh, just yeah? uh, you know, getting to hang out with uh, all these cool people and uh, getting to meet some of them for the first time. I've known Julie for years. Great to see more of that fabulous face, um, and certainly a joy meeting uh, Greg Tamo, Mojda. Like, oh, I think there's a future in there uh, for us. I just, I, you know, the, yeah. you feel these connections, <laughs> making these connections, and um, and working with the people behind the scenes. Like, I mean, I love Drew and Kat, my oh, hair and makeup amazing. people, and Zola, the <laughs> stylist, and Zola. you know what? what, what it takes a Lovely, village yeah. to make a show like That's this. Right. When you realize how many incredibly talented people are behind all the producers, you know, like the incredible, like the, the amazing Chloe. It was like oh, my God. rock. I called her like late into the night, like I'm. Scared and I'm neurotic, and I and she would soothe my soul. I mean, it, it's amazing what it takes to put yeah, a I, show like this I on the air. So, yeah, so. The characters, the, just the characters around the room. I mean, like, um, it, you know, what, one of the things when you when you come to an event like this, you really don't know what you're getting into. And, uh, you know, Ali, from, uh, you know, building a rapport with you over the last little while, uh, you know, making fun of each other, and that was a lot of fun. And, and I know it seems like Tom and I might have been at odds, but, um, you know, there's so much that we, we share in common, and we had a chance to, uh, to chat about that throughout the week. And, and, and Julie and I can, I mean, it's just, it's all about, uh, about people. And, and when I had my jaw on the floor, Today. I mean, yeah, it's just, <laughs> these are memories that uh, certainly I'll, I'll keep with me. For, and, and you know what, guys? Sorry, but not just the books, but just everyone's background is really eye-opening, you know? We are Canada. Yeah. We are Canada. Absolutely. You know? And it, it yeah. bears mentioning it doesn't always go this smoothly between the panelists. Mm. Right? <laughs> You're putting five people with diverse opinions like at a table world. together. It doesn't always gel like this. This is a, this is a special year. Yeah. I, I really... That's awesome. Yeah. Um, we had an uh, audience question over here. Um, so we've seen some clashing opinions between like the negative and positive mm -hmm. aspects of um, American war. So I guess my question would be, do you think that the positive or negative theme gets a message across better or faster? Uh, what is it? Uh, well, honey, for, is forgiveness, it better use the honey forgiveness the, one. The vinegar or the honey? Forgiveness one, and it's, I think, got a really positive message. So... Um, at its core, I'd say that, but I mean, can anybody in the room not say that Tomo made just an amazing, oh my God. amazing yes. appeal? Like, yes. I, listen, and, and, and you can ask, you can ask the producers, they asked us all to rank our books at the beginning of the week. And I definitely, sorry, sorry Omar, but I definitely had American War at the bottom. Um, that was just, you know, me personally, but your, um, your defense of it, your, your, um, his passion. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, and, uh, sorry, Mosda, because I mean, I voted for <laughs> both people on day one, but I went into day one expecting to vote for American war. Yeah. So. For meaning against. Uh, yeah, like yeah, against. You voted against. off the table. I, I yeah. just wanted to answer that question as well, because I really wholeheartedly believe that how you read a book, hear music, have a conversation is really based on what's on the inside of you. So it's not necessarily a negative or a positive book or song or, you know, it's really about like, how is it, like, if you squeeze an apple, like I'm the metaphor girl. Yeah. If you squeeze an apple, you shouldn't get orange juice out of it, right? So if you say that's your love, you should be loving. So if you're ready to read a book, like these books inspired new thoughts. It inspired um, us to want to know more. Um, we, are, we are Canada, look at our faces. You know, like United Color of Benetton right here, right here on CBC. You know what I mean? So I personally try, I'm learning 
and it, as, as an adult especially, that to focus on what I get to do versus what I got to do. And we all, we all, we get this opportunity to be in this room today and speak, and you're the young voice. So I'm so happy you asked that question because you have an opportunity to really shape your thoughts based on how you're feeling. Same about social media, chasing likes and all that stuff, follows and views, it's all about how you're feeling. It's really all about how you're feeling on the inside. Well said. Yes. <laughs> We have, to, uh, we have to wrap it up there. I have a, a giveaway. I have a Kobo to give away. Chloe, do you present yourself with it? Not this time, because it is going to uh, Jacqueline Hillier. The, are, we, are, we about to, are we about to be crushed? Something's not making me too happy. Are we? Yeah. I mean, if it falls, none of us get hit right now. <laughs> but we do lose a cameraman or two. Dave's dead, for sure. That's the spirit of that. Oh, the audience, uh, this young lady who asked the question here, you are going to win a Kobo. I know you are fearful for your life right now because of the movement about, uh, above you. But you are the winner of a, yeah, a very nice device that has been. Uh, Speaking of this device, yes. you have to shoot a pickup before you guys I have to shoot a pickup, okay. Yes, okay, great, one last thing. And if you guys can keep this, uh, this big circular metallic thing uh, shaking yeah. around us, that would be it. <laughs> That'll help me keep my hands steady. <laughs> it's like never done that. <clears throat> yeah, it was great. You know, Canada Reads, we celebrated books, and then a lot of people died really soon after it. So <laughs> that was kind of a negative thing, but, but still, dies. literature. But still books, that's what we are celebrating. <laughs> yes, all right, we are wrapped. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining us this year.